Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. 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 Hope you enjoy. Story number one, The Old Breed, written by Teller of Tall Tales. The smell of a cigar smoke hung heavy in the air of the backwater bar I found myself in, the various species intermingling, giving off a sense of false peace. The burnt bludgeon was a bar for scum, criminals, and smugglers. I only found myself here because I was being handed off to another smuggler, where I'd be going, I did not know. The little bell above the door tinkled in the comparative quiet. My four eyes widened, they were supposed to be extinct. An old breed clinging to a thread of salvation, but one stood in the door, metallic, robotic prosthetic touching the top of the doorframe as they ducked their head through. Black hair shot through with grey grew all over his still organic half of their head. They raised their head, and I heard a few audible gasps. Half of the human's face was metal, a rubber membrane stretched over where the cheek would be, just below the pitch-black camera eye. The bright green iris of the human's natural eye washed over the occupants of the bar as they walked towards the counter. A sword was strapped to their back, a human firearm slung low on their hip by their cybernetic arm. The human slid into a stool and looked at the bartender in the eye. What was left of the lips pulling up into an amicable smile? Excuse me, bartender. You wouldn't happen to have a human vodka in these baths, would you? The bartender slowly nodded, picking up a bottle of clear liquid. Two hundred credits per ounce, the bartender grumbled dusting the bottle off. The human chuckled softly, reaching into a pocket at their back jacket and setting a gold-colored coin on the counter. The bartender's hackles raised, the skin on his dog-like face paling as he clutched the bottle. I understood his reaction, though. Pure aether was rare. Only a few known species used it as currency, equivalent to two million galactic standard credits. I don't really carry anything smaller. But you can keep the change. I haven't had a non-synthesized vodka for about ten cycles now. The bar went silent, all chatter ceasing. Ten galactic cycles was the equivalent to two hundred human years. If this human wasn't bluffing, they were the living equivalent of an eldritch being. Tenderly, the bartender set the bottle and shot a glass down before picking up the coin and pocketing it. He seemed afraid of the human. The human picked up the bottle, pouring the clear liquid into the glass until it was full before knocking it back in its entirety. Someone gathered their wits and spoke. Seems they're not place for one of the old breed to get a drink. My captor grabbed one of my arms, holding it tightly, almost shaking. The human laughed softly, pouring a drink another shot before speaking. <laughs> well, how does one put this? He raised his prosthetic to the light, inspecting the non-human construction. An old friend called in a favor, said his granddaughter had been kidnapped by her lover, wanted me to find her. He poured another shot as the air grew tense, many hands falling to their weapons. Calm down now, I don't want to turn this into a bloodbath. I'm just looking for information. He reached into his breast pocket and held up a photo with his prosthetic. A photo of me with my grandfather in the hospital. Grandpa, were you really telling the truth when you said you saved a human life? If you've seen this young lady, please kindly point me in her direction, so I may bring her home where she belongs. Setting the picture down, he took the shot he poured and dumped it down his throat. My captor stood stepping out from the table and quietly drawing the human gun he stole from my father. The human didn't notice. I tried to scream, but my captor had already pulled the trigger. The deafening bang made my ears ring and most everyone flinch, except the human. The prosthetic was by his head, clutching something as the human shook their head, dropping a deformed bullet into his empty shot glass. The human's head turned, the smile gone. You know, I thought you'd be trouble, after all. You matched the photo the old man handed me. Pretty powerful illusion magic you have there, disguising her as empty space. Incredible. 
the human picked up a bottle of clear spirits as my captor shook. Bringing the rim to his lips, he began to drink, chugging the rest of the bottle's contents before crushing it with his cybernetic hand. But I'm going to have to ask you to surrender. You will not win. My captor snarled and began thumbing back the hammer of the firearm. Before anyone knew what happened, my captor fell back, a chunk silently removed from his skull as he dropped to the ground. The shot glass sat empty, the deformed bullet gone as the human drew his cybernetic arm back and sighed, shaking his head. Dumbass, try to shoot me with my own damned gun again. His eyes met mine, and he simply smiled. Ready to go home? Your family is worried about you. My vision blurred as I began to sob, all the fear and anxiety of the last week rushing out of that moment. A gentle arm wrapped around me, and I looked up at the human as he pulled the chair over and hugged me tight, saying, It's okay. Hero's here. Hero's here. Nobody's gonna hurt you under my watch. The human turned his head, and I heard the sounds of many tables being vacated as the door tinkled open. End of story. Story number two. The Range Advantage, written by Incredibles Ho. Personal Log 1. Mazino turned the head towards the screen, its teeth sharp and exposed, its claws as sharp as its teeth, its skin covered in a grotesque, slimy substance. With ten eyes turned towards the camera, he began to speak. Well, this is my first log, I guess. I'm a warrior of the Garkagian, a uh, dread host. The job involves a lot of fighting. We're on our way to pillage a world. <laughs> New Corsago, it's called. It's inhabited by... Huxassins. Huxassins. Humans? Yeah. That's how you pronounce it. He said in a glutteral tone, as if barking. Should be an easy job. Humans aren't known for their warrior prowess. Hopefully I'll be done soon, and the pay is good, the man said. Anyway, I'll see what happens once we land, it said, still barking. Personal log two. The being once again showed its horrible face, holding out the camera. They've got a fecking projectile throwers. Half of us were massacred. To the last man, I tell you, the being said once again, its harsh tone making its way through the room. First we slaughtered a few of their military encampments, and then we looted their riches, and then we thought that we could just leave, but uh, oh no. The fucking civilians started fighting against us. They can aim their fucking projectile throwers without augments. He almost seemed to yell, augments, which would normally cost a lot of credits. These frustrations didn't end there, however. We lost, like, one quarter of our entire bloody force. One quarter, he exclaimed in anger and frustration. And the Dreadlord is ordering us to continue. He took a deep breath, talking to himself before continuing. They're a race of scientists and poets, not warriors. They're weaklings. My claws and jaws rip through them like it's nothing. But one of their projectiles can kill me within an instant. Personal Log 3 the man once again reared its ugly face, showing its pointy teeth and hardened skin. After that failure, the fecking idiot, which also happens to be our leader, decided to alter our tactics. He looked at some paper he held in his hand. We're going to deep strike tomorrow. Their projectiles can't penetrate drop pods, and we'll instantly be in melee range. So that we can either tear them apart, he said, letting out a sigh. <sighs> this time we're attacking... He said, at the piece of paper he held in his hand once again. New London, a relatively wealthy colony. Don't know why no more dread hosts have tried plundering it. It says here it's quite undefended, he said. Oh well, at uh, this time we won't get torn to pieces before we even reach their lines. Personal Log 4 The man turned on the camera, his face desperate. He seemed to do his species equivalent of grimacing. He stopped for a moment, and he took a deep breath. These hairless apes shot us down whilst we were dropping into them. They tore apart our drum pods, he yelled. I was in one of the later waves, otherwise I too would be merely a pile of ash right now. He said something to himself. Ancestors hope this never reaches the captain, but rebellion looks like a pretty good option right now, he said. 
We lost maybe 2,000, 3,000 men. We've got one half of the force we started with, and we haven't even fucking touched their riches. He yelled in anger and frustration. Log number five. The man sat down. Fear was imprinted on his face. We have to go down. Again, he said. This might as well be a bloody last words, he said with his voice full of sorrow. Where are the riches I was promised, so that I could start my own family? Where are they? He said in frustration, his anger swelling. Might as well log where we're going. New Cressy looks undefended. Then again, that's what we thought about the previous two worlds. Personal Log 6 The man now sat not in his usual quarters, but rather a small area. Behind him was a human bed, and a human chair, and even a human desk. A bright static light shone upon him. I predicted it was failure. It was indeed disastrous, he said. He looked up at the camera, his eyes filled with sorrow. The world was undefended. That wasn't the problem, he said. They had guns on their ships. They don't ram their ships, they shoot with them, he yelled. They took us captive and here we are, far from home, still stronger, faster and harder than them. Just massively outranged. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons and channel members. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, it's difficult to pronounce, Lord Arishakal, Dregzoon, WRE, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.